Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, put your hands together this morning. We come to magnify the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Won't you stand on your feet? This morning, we're going to do something different. Get your programs out. Get your programs out. This is how we're going to do our call to worship from this point on. Amen. So that we all can be um, our, pray, our call to worship. Amen. And I want you to say it with um, happiness. I want you to say it with excitement. Amen. That you came here to worship the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to say, who are we? And why are we here? Well, come on, let's praise our God. I want you to put your hands together. Amen. Amen. And amen. Now, next Sunday when we do it, I want you to do it like you're excited. Don't be looking at me like you're mad. Amen. Because we come to worship the name of the Lord because he woke us up this morning. Did he wake anybody up this morning? Did he put food on your table this morning? It's all right to worship the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Holy Spirit. They look so good in that blue and white. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and wise God, we thank you this morning for allowing each and every one of us to come into this place. God, we come to worship you. We come to worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. So God, have your way with us. Let the Holy Spirit rain down on us like never before as we come to worship you today in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Would you stand, please? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal. Let us now reverently and sincerely declare our faith by the usage of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born on the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from which he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You remain standing as we sing this great hymn of the church. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's make a joyful noise. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Sweetest 
Hallelujah. You may be seated. How's everyone feeling today? It's just a beautiful day. Amen. Isn't it a beautiful day? All right. Can I get some more smiles? Hallelujah. 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 And then went away. 
So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the good householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these, where did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weed, the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. God. 
that is good let your whole life prove that God is good may your struggles keep you near the cross may your troubles show your whole life prove that God is good for he has done great things he has done great things he has done should outweigh your bad days. Amen. We thank God that we serve a good God. Amen. The altar is now open for you to come and make your petitions to the Lord this morning. It's so good when our prayers have been answered and we can see our prayers being answered. It's so good to see Deaconess Tara in the house this morning. Amen. We've been praying for her, and it's so good to see her. Amen. Her smiling face. Amen. Please make your way to the altar this morning. And as you come to the altar this morning to make your petitions known to the Lord, we're going to ask um, Sister Jasmine Glass to come and lead us to the throne of grace this morning. Amen. There is room at the altar, amen, to make your petitions to the Lord because we serve a great God. We serve an awesome God. He's been good to us. He's been great to us, amen, amen. I know that there's room, come young folk, there's room at the altar, amen. Caleb, Nyla, y'all come stand right here, amen. Amen, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for each and every bow my heart and head today 
hearts breaks against stagnation. I rebuke being comfortable with the life that you do not have planned for me. I pray that you set a fire down in my soul and bring me closer to you unimaginable. Break any barrier that is keeping me still in a place that isn't for you. I humbly ask that you send opportunities into my life fast. Teach me how to get out of my comfort zone and create a new environment for me where I can be my highest self. I know that I have a lot of room for growth. Deliver me from stagnation and comfortability. Amen. I rebuke laziness and fear of failure out of my life. I thank you. children and the elders here in West Kentucky, Lord. Bind us all together and allow us to give you the glory and do what it is that you need us to do. Remove any negativity in our hearts and our minds, Lord. We love you and we thank, I thank you for your guidance, your love each and every day. Be with anyone who needs you mentally, physically, and emotionally, Lord. Allow us to continue to seek you in everything that we do and that we go through. We love you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God for Sister Jasmine. Amen. That is a powerful prayer. That is a powerful prayer. Amen. Amen. She said, deliver us from stagnation and laziness. Amen. You better speak to the Lord this morning. <laughs> Amen. I am grateful for these young adults. Amen. I told them about, I asked Sister Jasmine when she walked in and asked Sister Mercedes about five minutes before service started. And I'm just grateful for their spirit. Amen. They didn't roll their eyes at me or get upset at me like some seniors do when you ask them to pray. Amen. But we thank God that they are connected to the Lord and they understand be always ready because you never know when God is going to need you to do something for him in the work of ministry. Amen. Amen. It is now time for us to give back to God, which God has given to us. Amen. Amen. It's giving time here at Wesley Temple. And we pray, those of you that are watching virtually, that you will sow a seed into the ministry here at Wesley Temple. Um, uh, coming across your screen is the different ways that we can give here. It's in your bulletin as well. Um, just in case you are not able to see our screen, we put it in the bulletin. Um, you can give through Cash App, amen, which is dollar sign, Wesley Temple, AME Zion. You can look us up on Givelify. You can look us up on our website, which is the link is there. And for those of you that want to mail your seed to the church, um, you can mail it to 104 North Prospect Street, Akron, Ohio, 44304. And for those of you that are here in the sanctuary, amen, these lovely stewards who are standing before you, one has, both of them have a basket for our ministry of kindness and the other one um, basket that they have is for our tithes and our offering. Jesus loves a cheerful giver, amen? And so we're gonna ask the two out of aisles to please stand and turn to the wall. And under the directions of these junior ushers, come and bring your tithes and offerings to the storehouse.
direction of this wonderful junior usher. And this child is leading us down the aisle. Come and bring your tithes and offering to the storehouse. stand please all things come of thee O Lord Thank you, Miss Leah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes, um, sometimes we have to encourage ourselves. Amen. Sometimes we have times where um, things are just not going the way that we want them to go, and. Um, it takes me to Psalms 23, where it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, yeah. So when we have those times of despair and those times of, of loneliness, uh, we should always look to the hills where it comes with our help and just know that your Lord is, our Lord is our shepherd, and he's going to guide us and comfort us in every situation that we're in. Right, yeah. Amen. Amen. Some days I wake up, I'm in great moods. Some days my st days start out in good moods and it slowly dwindles to something different. I don't know why. You know, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know why. But it happens. And this always comes to my mind. The Lord is my shepherd. And he'll guide me and he comforts me. So I just want to encourage anyone today that may be having some struggles or situations or just not having a good moment or just not willing, you know, feeling well, that God is always by our side. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right. Lord is my shepherd He goes before me Defender behind me I won't I'm filled with anointing My cup's overflowing Hallelujah No weapon can harm me 
Oh, come on. Oh, won't you worship him? How many of you know that he's your comfort? Amen. We thank God for the minister, Paula. Amen. Amen. You know, I texted her a few weeks ago. I told her, I said, Minister Paul, I miss you. Amen. Um, sometimes we have to let people know when we miss their presence. Amen. And so we thank God for Minister Paula. And we thank God for this music ministry. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for them? This morning, um, Sister Mercedes read so wonderfully the gospel according to Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. I want to read those same verses to you this morning. And it reads thusly, he put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seeds in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, do you not sow seeds in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, uh, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest and the harvest time. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Just for a few seconds this morning, I want to preach from the thought, overcoming weeds in the kingdom of God. Overcoming weeds in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. God, uh, open our eyes so that we can see your truth. Father God, open our ears so that we can hear your voice. Open our minds so that we can understand your word yes. this morning. God, open our hearts so that we may receive all that you would have us to receive. Decrease me and fill me with your presence. Yes. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ that I pray. Amen overcoming weeds in the kingdom of God. Beloved, nobody likes weeds. Weeds are the bane of our existence. We do nothing and weeds come up. We, we spray like crazy and weeds come back. Yeah. There's one weed in particular that I dislike more than any other. I don't know what they are called, but I have my own name for them. They're called exploder weeds. We probably had weeds as long as we've been planting things, beloved. Weeds are highly adaptable. Have you ever noticed that weeds grew where other plants won't? Uh, weeds are so sneaky. When I was younger, my grandparents had a garden out back, and sometimes we would plant corn um, in our garden. Now, uh, we may never see that particular weed in years, but as soon as we plant corn, there comes this plant that looks just like corn. But it isn't. It's weed. Now, I could go into the garden and pull it out, but when they are young, they look just like corn seedlings. So I would be in danger of pulling up the corn plants right alongside the weeds, beloved. 
Jesus takes this very familiar scene in everyday life and applies it spiritually. In another one of his stories called Parables, designed to make us think about spiritual things in a new way. Uh, you probably heard the story before, but picture yourselves in the shoes of someone hearing it for the first time without the explanation. As I've mentioned before, after Jesus' plane taught previously, these stories might seem confusing at first, beloved. It's just like Jesus is now addressing different audience differently. Uh, to the Pharisees, he speaks judgment. Uh, to the people, he speaks in ways uh, uh, the curious can understand, but the callous uh, won't have a clue. Uh, well, remember, this is a story, Wesley Temple. Jesus is painting a pictures for us, but we are simply too simple to understand the kingdom and all of its complexity. So Jesus gives us lots of pictures, each one with a different point of view. This point of view is relatively simple on the surface. In the world of Jesus has broadcast his gospel, which is received by many, but not by by all. Everyone uh, is either a member of God's kingdom, his seeds, uh, or Satan, the weeds. Uh, God will wait patiently until every one uh, of his seeds is brought into the kingdom. Uh, then he'll weed out the unbelievers and put them uh, in a place of sorrow and pain. Uh, there are several observation lessons uh, uh, for us to observe this morning. We have an enemy who hates us. Not everyone is going to heaven. And hell is a bad place to be avoided at all costs. And God is the only way to escape hell. My question for you this morning is, are you a weed? Uh, that's a strange question, isn't it? Are you a weed? But that isn't just the question our gospel lesson is asking each of us. Are we weeds? Our gospel text concerns the difference between weeds and wheat in a field. Jesus tells a parable about a farmer who sowed some um, wheat seeds in his field. Everything was going good until one day his servants noticed that some weeds looked just like the wheat were growing up in the field also. They ran to the owner and asked him about the kinds of seeds that he used. He said that an enemy, uh, an, 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 an enemy had sown the bad seeds in his field and that he had used good seeds. Uh, then the servants began uh, being eager to make the field look good again, asked if they should go out into the field and pull up the weeds. But the master says no, because uh, until the weeds uh, and the wheat ripen, uh, no one could really tell them apart. Uh, and they might disturb the good wheat along and try with trying to pull up the weeds. Uh, yes, I'm going somewhere this morning, Wesley Temple. Uh, he tells them uh, that you that they should leave the fields alone uh, and then uh, the wheat is when the wheat is ready to harvest uh, the weeds will bloom also uh, and one could tell the difference uh, then the harvester could come and pull up the weeds and burn them uh, and gather them uh, um, for the harvest of wheat next uh, Jesus then explains uh, the parable by saying uh, that the sower or the master is the son of God and the field is the world and the good seeds are the people of the kingdom of God and the bad seeds or the weeds are the evil people or 
the devil uh, who sold them into the field. Uh, Jesus then says uh, that you cannot tell the difference uh, between these two groups of people. Uh, uh, but when the close of age comes, uh, when God comes back, uh, the harvest of the world is ready. Uh, uh, then the angels will separate the evil ones uh, from the righteous ones. Uh, the evil ones will burn and the righteous people uh, will live with him for eternity. Uh, there are also some not so obvious lessons uh, that we can pull from Jesus' choice of uh, picturing a garden and weeds. Uh, and I want to talk to you just for a few more moments about weeds. Uh, the first point I want you to know uh, is that weeds uh, confuse the appearance uh, of who is a believer and who is not. Uh, uh, just as weeds among wheat can be mistaken uh, uh, for real plants, uh, there are individuals in the kingdom of God, there are individuals in the church uh, who may appear to be believers uh, but have not truly embraced the faith. Uh, it's important for us to discern genuine faith uh, and not be misled by outward appearance. Uh, uh, we've heard Jesus say it before in Matthew 7 and 21, uh, not everyone who says to me, uh, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, uh, but not only the one who does, uh, but only the one who does my father's will uh, in heaven. Uh, the truth is uh, that the church as a whole, uh, uh, there are among us uh, that look like believers uh, on the outside, uh, but aren't redeemed on the inside. Uh, I'm going to say that for somebody else. Uh, the truth is that in the church, uh, there are a whole lot of people who are among us uh, that look like a believer on the outside, uh, but aren't redeemed on the inside. Uh, I call them make believers uh, uh, because they are pretending to be Christians. Uh, you can sing the songs uh, and you can talk the talk, uh, but without the spirit of God uh, living on the inside of you, uh, you won't change on the inside. Uh, your character won't be transformed. Uh, it's confusing uh, because often uh, we only see the outside appearance of a person, uh, but we don't know what is going on uh, on the inside. Uh, so when we see someone uh, that think that we think is a believer acting in a way that is totally contrary uh, to the character of Christ, uh, it is hard uh, that the person just needs to grow uh, or if they aren't really a believer. Uh, not everybody that sits in your pew uh, uh, may not be a believer. Uh, there's some wheats among us uh, and then there are some weeds. Uh, don't look at nobody, just look straight ahead this morning. Uh, so what do we do? Believe the best and don't judge them, but be very, very observant for what they do. The second point, weeds tangle the roots of real plants and impede growth. Weeds have the potential to entangle the roots of real plants, uh, uh, inhabiting their growth uh, and development. Uh, similarly, sinful influences uh, in our lives can hinder our spiritual growth uh, and relationships with God. Uh, we must be diligent in rooting out sin uh, and cultivating a fertile soil um, uh, for spiritual growth. Uh, people that aren't redeemed uh, are going to try to tangle you up in all kinds of stuff uh, and won't help you grow closer to the Lord. Uh, so when someone you think is a Christian, beloved, invites you to do something clearly uh, 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 that will hinder your spiritual growth as a Christian, you beloved, you must resist and don't become entangled in the stuff just because someone you trust is saying it. Use the word, um, what you know of Jesus' character as a guide and not words of another person. Weeds can tangle the roots of real plants and impede growth. And not only that, beloved, uh, my third point is, 
weeds uh, will rob the soil of its nutrition. Uh, uh, do I have any gardeners out there this morning? Uh, weeds compete with the wheat uh, um, for nutri nutrients in the soil, uh, depriving the plants of essential sustenance. Uh, uh, similarly, distractions uh, and worldly desires uh, can drain uh, our spiritual vitality uh, and leave a spiritual malnourished. Uh, we must prioritize our relationship with God uh, and guard against anything uh, that may deplete our spiritual resources. Uh, I come to tell you this morning uh, that unsaved people uh, will generate all kinds of energy uh, focusing on what they should focus on. Uh, they will divide the church. Uh, they will attack other Christians. Uh, they will dilute the gospel uh, by arguing over doctoring. Uh, uh, they will um, cause the church to drown uh, because they're focusing on the wrong things. Uh, and I come to ask you, uh, if you call yourself a Christian, uh, are you, is your soil uh, rooted in uh, the word of God? Uh, are you attending Bible study? Are, are you attending Sunday school? Uh, are you attending class meetings? Uh, the reason why some of us uh, are not spiritually mature uh, or growing uh, is because we are not filling our souls uh, with the word of God, uh, with the food that needs to be in our systems. Uh, weeds can rob the soil uh, of our nutrition. Uh, uh, two more points and I'm going to get out your way. Uh, uh, the fourth point is uh, weeds produce no fruit uh, but plenty of seeds. Uh, yeah, yeah. Weeds uh, do not bear fruit like uh, the wheat uh, but instead produce numerous of seeds uh, that can spread and multiply rapidly. Uh, likewise, uh, negative behavior and attitudes in our lives uh, uh, can uh, um, deal that are not dealt with properly uh, can do the same thing. Uh, we must uproot the seeds of sin uh, before they take root and flourish in our lives. Uh, a non-believer can be known uh, eventually by the fact that they produce no change uh, in character uh, that shows they are a Christian. Uh, that's why I can't understand uh, how Christians can allow people, we said this at Bible study, uh, how Christians can allow people uh, to be acting all type of crazy in the church uh, and nobody says anything. Uh, you just let them cause decision. Uh, you let them cause seeds of discord. Uh, you let them cause apathy in the church. Uh, and everybody just goes on about their business and as soon as somebody calls out the discord in the church instead of us being on their side we're on the side of the person that's causing the discord in the church the reason why is because people who are weeds in the church don't produce fruit the reason why our churches are not growing the reason our churches are not having fruit is because we have too many weeds in the church uh, and people who don't want to be weed. You can look at me all like you. I'm going to talk to the people on virtual Zoom. Uh, maybe you will say amen uh, because we have to understand if we want our churches to grow, we have to have more wheat in the church. We, we have to have more wheat in the church. We have to have more wheat in the church in our fifth and final is that weeds dry up quickly, but are always present in return. Uh, yes, they are. You see, weeds may wither and dry up due to external factors, but they often have deep roots that can quickly resurface. In the same way, Temporary distractions or challenges may cause us to falter in our faith temporarily, but we must remain vigilant and resent in our, resilient in our commitment to God. Even when we think we are weed free, know that weeds will return. Any gardeners here this morning, you know what I'm talking about. You'll go out there and you'll clean up the weeds. Uh, you'll, 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 your garden will look good. And then come back a few weeks later. Uh, and those weeds have returned. Uh, make believers will always be among us. Uh, so we must keep our guard. Uh, so there are a couple of values we need to adopt uh, in light of this uh, 
patience and careful observation. You see, patience, God doesn't rush to judgment but waits until the fruit shows. We need to wait as well as a general principle. Maybe you, you're you wanting to do great things for God or maybe you just called out to him in pain and begged for his intervention in your life and it's not coming. I come to tell you this morning to have patience. God may be growing some fruit on the inside of you so that you, and you know what the fruit is, the fruit of the spirit. Not only should you have patience, but you should be careful observation. I'm not saying that we should examine each other and judge one we think not producing enough fruit and call them weeds. But Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. If someone you know is growing in the Lord, it will eventually show. And conversely, if they show no growth over a long period of time, then maybe it's time to lovingly encourage them to examine their walk with the Lord to determine why the growth isn't happening on the inside. How many of you know that you can be in the church for 30 years and not have any fruit that will grow? there are people who used to have fruit that have grown and that's why you have to as I said it earlier that's why there is Bible study and, and class meeting and, and Sunday school in the Methodist church because we all need the soil we all need to be watered we all need to be poured into so that fruit can grow on the inside of us the reason why folk in the church are always battling is because you have the wheat and you have the wheat and the weeds always want to overcome what the wheat is doing but those of you who are wheat on the deep down inside you have to be remain steadfast unmovable and know that as you continue to be poured into that fruit will grow on the inside of you and that God will get the glory God will glory now the question can be asked which are you are you weeds eh, or are you wheat this parable is not told so that you might go around and judge others and decide who is a weed and who is weeds Jesus says loud and clear that his responsibility is the function of the father and his angels. But the parable is one to take a close look at his or her life with the understanding that no one can judge one's own heart and then repent and bear good fruit. So today, we don't want you to look at your neighbor and say, well, pastor is really talking to you. Today's sermon is addressed to each of us individually. It's time to look at one's own sin, at one's own conduct in life, then make a decision about repentance for your own life and turning around and bearing fruit for Jesus. As we look at ourselves this morning, as we compare ourselves to the example of weeds or wheat, we can this question of ourselves. Do we want to look like the wheat when it's convenient for us and then be like weeds the rest of the time? Or putting it another way, does our faith in Jesus and the responsibility of living a committed kind of life get turned on and off when it's easy for us? Many people live Christian, um, label Christians as hypocrites. They say one thing and expect another from others and not themselves. My question to you, are you like that? Am I like that? Are we like that? Do we have one standard for ourselves and another standard for someone else? Or are we consistent? Do we live out 
what Jesus has demonstrated in his life uh, as a way of living uh, each day as we face this earth. Uh, uh, but another question uh, that I have to ask you, uh, are you being productive with the life uh, that God has given you? Uh, are we bearing fruit for the sake uh, of the gospel? Uh, you can't say I'm wheat uh, and then you have no fruit on you. Uh, Jesus says that the wheat bears good fruit, uh, but the weeds bear no fruit. Uh, are you willing to bear fruit uh, to get involved uh, for the sake of the gospel message, beloved? Uh, our church is always in need of people uh, to help with the ministry uh, in the church. Uh, we constantly need Sunday school teachers, uh, lay council workers, uh, missionaries, uh, Christian educators, uh, disciples of Christ, uh, Bible school teachers, uh, a whole host of other responsibilities uh, await people who belong to the church. Uh, but I wonder why it's so difficult for us to find people uh, to do these functions uh, if we all want to bear fruit. Uh, is it because too many of us uh, are weeds in the church uh, and bear no fruit? Uh, we have a difficult time uh, finding wheat in the field. Uh, I'm not coming to talk about nobody, uh, but I come to tell somebody uh, and I come to encourage somebody. Uh, you can't get excited about being wheat uh, and when there's a need for you to do something uh, in God's kingdom, uh, you can't be found to do anything. Uh, you can't be found. Uh, God wants people in the church who are are wheat, uh, who are doing the things of Christ, uh, who are doing what God has called us to do. Uh, we need people who are prayer warriors. Uh, you may can't do what you used to do, uh, but there should be some people who are wheat in the church uh, that don't mind praying uh, on a Saturday morning. Uh, don't mind getting to church early to pray uh, because we understand that not everybody uh, that comes to the church of the God uh, is coming to church for the right reason. Uh, there are people that come and look and observe, uh, want to cause confusion uh, and so if we had a few weak people uh, in the church uh, that didn't mind praying uh, didn't mind praising God didn't mind setting the atmosphere uh, so when those people who are weeds uh, try to raise themselves up uh, the power of the weak uh, that have been praying in the life of the church uh, uh, won't allow those weeds uh, to entangle us uh, and to get us off kilter uh, I just came to encourage uh, those of you I'm going to talk I'm going I'm to leave the weed alone I mean, I'm going to leave the weeds alone. Uh, can I encourage those of you uh, in the church who are wheat? Uh, I'm talking about those of you uh, who show up. Uh, those of you who do the work of ministry. Uh, I know it's about just 20 of us uh, in the entire congregation uh, and you feel tired. Uh, you feel like you want to give up. Uh, I come to tell you you better hold to God's unchanging hand uh, because as you continue to do the work of ministry God's going to continue to bless you. God's going to continue don't be like everybody else even when they say why are you always over there doing that and doing this you keep doing what God has called you to do even when they are mad you show up you serve because it's not about them but you serve a living and risen God that one's for y'all that was for me I had to sometimes, you've got to encourage yourselves. You got to encourage yourselves uh, because if you get so fixated on the wheat, I mean on the weeds, uh, you get fixated on the weeds, you are forgetting what God is trying to do in you that is a wheat. We can overcome weeds in the kingdom of God. We can overcome, you just have to remain focused. Remain focused on what God wants you to do. The other day, I hope Jasmine, don't get mad at me. The other day, I called her into my office and I said, Jasmine, what do you wanna do in life? What do you want to do in life, Jasmine? Jasmine says, I just want to serve my church. I want to serve God. And I want to get closer to God more. I said, well, praise the Lord. I, as a pastor, need to know that so that I am able to help you grow and help you 
um, bear the fruit that God has in you because there is um, something that God is trying to do in your life. Then, and I'm done, but this is the point of being wheat and weeds in the life of the church. Those of us went to the winter and went to the um, checkup meeting. Bishop asked the question. He said, "Why are there not people in the church that are going into the ministry?" He said, "Why are people coming through the doors and they're not going into ministry?" He said, because our class leaders are not doing what they're supposed to do to help grow an individual so that they can hear the voice of God and know the difference between wheat and weeds. I put that part on it. So then as soon as I was texting, I'm done. As soon as I, the bishop said that, I immediately text Sister Mercedes. Even though Sister Mercedes has not came out and said anything, and she's running down um, Prospect Avenue, and she's running down um, MLK because she's trying to outrun God. But God has been in her spirit for a very long time. And every time she turns on Facebook, every time someone stands up and preaches, there's a word for her because God is doing something in her life uh, um, for the next level of ministry. But the reason why she cannot really discern the real voice of God is because we as the body of Christ have not produced a, a place where people who are weak to be able to truly listen to the voice of God. If the preacher is the only one that's doing it, we have done a disservice to what God is doing in the kingdom. Because the preacher should not be the only one. There should be missionaries speaking a word to her. There should be Christian educators speaking a word to her so that she can really truly hear if the Lord is calling her into ministry. So I said to her, I said, Mercedes, what we're going to do, I put her class leader to the to side, I said, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a recommendation um, at the next Scorley conference to get to make you an exhorter in the life of the church so that the exhorter in you can hear the voice of God so God can speak to you whether you should enter ministry. And so I come to tell you on this Sunday of talking about weed and wheats that you need to be an example. Those of you that are wheats need to be an example and need to pray for this woman of God, need to pray for that woman of God so that God can truly speak a word into their lives. You may think you have arrived. You may think that you have done what you needed to do in your life, but God is doing something in theirs, and they're excited about doing ministry because, you know, we can get stagnant. And that's what's wrong with the church because we've been stagnated. But God is saying he's rising up. He's getting rid of the wheat. I mean, he's getting rid of the weeds. He's, he's deleting the weeds, and he's rising up those that are, have wheat in their lives so that they can do the ministry that God has called them to do. Wesley Temple, we're not dead. We're in our comeback season, and God is going to continue to send people here that don't mind doing what God has called them to do because ministry is hard work. Ministry is hard work. Stunning your feet all over the place. Stunning your feet all over the place. We thank God for what God is doing in this ministry. God loves each and every one of us. But the problem is that there are a lot of people who have never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so every Sunday morning, we wake up. Every Sunday morning, we come into the church house and we sit in the pews, we hear songs, we hear 
the preacher, and the preacher then says, is there anyone here that's never accepted the Lord as their Lord and Savior? And there are people who sit in the pew Sunday after Sunday, and they hear that, and they know that they truly have not given their life to God. You want to know how I know Deaconess Hubbard? It's because that used to be me. I sat in the pews when they would do this part of the service, knowing that I never truly gave my heart to the Lord. And my pastor got up one Sunday after looking at a news article that they did about me in Cleveland, and he said the only thing that he didn't say in the article is what his church family was. And so what did I do that Sunday? I felt that the Lord was tugging on my heart to give him my heart but give the preacher my hand and I walked down the aisle because on that day I wanted to make sure that when I closed my eyes on this side of the Jordan that I woke up on that side of the Jordan so this is your opportunity if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this is your opportunity to accept Jesus it's not about joining the church but it's about joining the kingdom of God and if you're here this morning and you want to make sure that you will be a part of the kingdom when he comes back, all you have to do is just accept him. You can come down to the aisle. Those of you that are worshiping with us virtually, you can inbox us and let us know, and we will pray the prayer of salvation with you. Then there may be somebody that says, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I'm looking for a church home. If you're here this morning, and you're looking for a church home, we ask that you come. We're looking for some wonderful believers in the life of the church. We're looking for people who will do ministry and do things here in the work of ministry. Come on, Wesley Temple. Come on, Wesley Temple. Because we're doing something great here. If you're here worshiping with us virtually, you can join our church and be a part of our church uh, virtually um, as well. We're looking for people who are serious about doing what God has called them to do. Is there another one? Don't let this day go by. Is there another one? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Can you hear me, Brother Mama? Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Deaconess, can you get a hymnal for this young man. They, they got to open it. Get, give, the, give the hymnal to the deaconess. They got to open it to the... does your father love you? He loves you a lot, right? He may get on you when you do things bad, right? But he still loves you, right? That's what Jesus does for us. Jesus, sometimes when we do bad, he'll get on us. But he still loves us. And that's why I love him so much. How old are you? You're 11 years old. And you wanted to come up here to make sure that Jesus Christ was in your life. I just said it's last Sunday that this church has to do a better job of doing children and youth ministry because you're old enough. What's two plus two? Four, right? If you're old enough to know what two plus two is, you're old enough to know who Jesus is. And it's our responsibility to teach you and to let you know who Jesus is. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and he arose on the third day? 
Yes. Amen. The fact that you believe that and the fact that you confess with your mouth, the Bible says that you shall be saved, period. Hello, thank you. Hello, somebody. Somebody, I get it. Amen. At 11 years old, you get that. And guess what? You're going to make mistakes. People don't want to tell you that. You're going to make mistakes. Just because you came up here today and gave your life to Christ, when you go back to your seat, you're going to make mistakes. I wish someone would have told me that. It's not like some magic wand that as soon as you accept Jesus Christ, like boom, and then uh, your whole entire life, you're going to be praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and all of that. You're going to make mistakes. But guess what? The Holy Spirit is here to convict your heart and to let you know when you make those mistakes. And then you got to repent and turn from your wicked ways. And God will forgive you. And guess what? It's our responsibility to teach you so that when you grow older, you won't turn and do um, all these other crazy things. Jordan, it's your responsibility. This is your son. If the church is not doing what the church needs to do, you the daddy. It starts at home first. You got to teach him the things of the Lord. And guess what? When you teach him the things of the Lord and how you teach him and you already are doing it, you come into Bible study, you're coming to prayer meeting, you got to do it first. Because when you do it as the daddy, then your son will follow suit with you. And when you do it, when you treat, you can't say negative things and do all these crazy things in front of him because he's going to take what you do. When you're in front of you, you may think some things. That's when you go to your prayer closet and you talk to the Lord. But you can't do certain things around children. That's what's wrong with parents today. They cuss and do all this stuff and negative stuff around these children, and they want to know why they go and cuss the, children, uh, pe pe the teachers out in school. He's watching you. You the man in his life. And you need to be an example of who God is and how good God is because he's watching you. When things go uh, uh, crazy in your life, are you accepting and giving God praise and knowing that God is going to work it out? When you do those things, this baby right here will follow in your footsteps because he's, he's looking at you and you the first one. Then these other ones right here, they the second ones. Your, your cousin back there, your family members, they the second people, but you are the first Jesus that he will see and you have to be an example to him. I love you and I'm so excited that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and I know that um, many months ago you asked me to be your Godfather and so I'm happy to know that you love the Lord and it's my responsibility take off pastor but as your Godfather it's my responsibility to lead you as well especially when daddy acting a fool it's my job to make sure you do right amen because that's what Godfather is supposed to do amen amen give me a hug can we celebrate God? A young man who came up here today. We're looking for a church home. We're very excited. We have decided to be a part of this Bible study. I'm going to tell you, we're not perfect. None of us. None of us. If you look at these people, we're some imperfect people. But the one thing I do know is that we all love the Lord. You're going to see some things. You're going to see them argue. You're going to see them get frustrated about stuff. You're going to see them praise the Lord. Just like family. We may get on each other's nerves, but can't nobody talk about us. Amen, somebody. Amen, Wesley Temple. Praise the Lord. Y'all, amen. But we want to make sure that we lead you in the right way. And that the spirit that moves you to join our church this morning, that we do right by you and right by God. Um, you look young, and I know I'm not, the reason I'm asking this is because there's a certain reason. How old are you? 41. You was born in 83 or 80? Oh, you're older than me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen, amen. We thank God that God is sending. Have you noticed that God has been sending young men to our church? Y'all, I know. I know. 
I know I'm taking, I know y'all ready to go. But this part of service is the time we're supposed to take time on. Amen. And be able to minister to people. Because God moved on his heart to join this church. And so, men, that's in the church, 41, he's going to be looking at you. See what you do in the life of the church. You, men, lead this young man. Take him underneath your wing. Show him the love of Christ. Because we don't know what he's been through in his life, but guess what? You, as men of the church, can heal if there's any brokenness in him. Right? The men of the church. That's why the men of Zion need to do ministry, because God is sending us young men in the church to do ministry. Amen? Okay, y'all say, Pastor, just bring him in. I just got to... It's what I do. Amen. My brother, dear brothers and sisters, called Wesley Temple, in order that none may be admitted hasty into the church, it is our custom to receive our person seeking fellowship with us on a profession of faith into a preparatory membership on trial, during which time such members may have the opportunity to become acquainted with the rules and doctrines of our church. And the church may lead this, may learn the sincerity and depths of the motives and the prompt them to seek such fellowship. The person, the young man before you, desires to be received on probation. And let me tell you what probation means. I want you to think it's the bad probation. But probation here in the life of the church is that you join our church and say six months from now, you're like, they crazy over there. Then I'll help you find another church family that will love on you. Then... You say, after six months, you say, oh, I really like that church. I really love that church. I really want to be in full connection. I want to be, because we're, we're bigger than Wesley Temple. We're a connectional church. You, you'll learn more about that. Then you say, you know, I really love that church. I really want to stay there. Then we'll bring you on as a full member and full connection. You still have most of the benefits, and I'll explain all of that to you. But I know some people get nervous when we say probation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it's necessary for me to remind you, Wesley Temple, that your lives should be holy examples to him. That he may not receive anything from you that damaged him, but that through your help may have reason to give thanks to God that he was led into this fellowship. My brother, you have by the grace of God made your decision to follow Christ and to serve him, which decision we trust is not based upon any worthiness in ourselves, but solely on the merits of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his death and intercession for us. In order that the church may know your purpose, we ask you to answer the following question. Have you an earnest desire be, to be saved from your sins? If you do, say, I have. Will you guard yourself against all things contrary to the teaching of God's word and endeavor to lead a holy life following the commandments of God? Are you determined to reverently commit yourself to the things led to God's grace in the ministry of the word and in the private and public worship of God? Amen, my brother. Let me be the first one um, to welcome you as a member of the Wesley Temple AME Zion Church. Amen. Can we celebrate that God sent Michael Mitchell to be with us and to be a member of our church? Amen. Amen. We thank God that God sent him another millennial to be a part of this ministry. Amen. That young lady right there, um, I want you to see her after service. She's going to have you fill out a form um, and so we can get some information from you, and then I'm going to talk to you briefly after service, all right? All right, we're going to have these wonderful deaconess take you back to your seat. Brother Hamilton, you can help him back to his seat as well. Amen. If you all will allow me um, two seconds, stay up here. Two seconds, wake them young people up. Wake them young people up. I know it's time for us to go. Um, Christopher and Caleb, can y'all come down here, please? Can you take off your coat, smile? I know I woke you up. You're sleeping in church. My God. And then she says, show was. You get smart. 
Where my belt at? Scoot, scoot on down. Scoot on down. Scoot on down. Scoot on down. Is your is your daughter here? Um, young folks, all y'all. Come on. Sorry. Y'all, I'm looking for them. They had to do usher it. Come on. I know they want to leave in their post. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Send, send at the altar. Send at the altar. And I thank y'all for letting me do this. I got a text message during service um, asking me to pray for our children. Um, I'm not going to tell you what happened. But when someone asks me to pray for these children, we got to take the time out to pray for them. Especially with what happened. These young people are going through a lot. They show up and they want to do church and they want to be a part of the church family. They want to do ministry. Then we as older people, adults, we get mad with one another and stop them from coming to church because we're upset and we think that it's going to hurt the church. But it really hurts you. Because we have to be careful. The Bible says that when you make any of these babies go away from him, you're going to have to pay. They don't say it like that, but it, I'm paraphrasing. When we make these babies turn away from God, we will pay. Some of us are paying because we turned our children away from the church. We have to lead these babies in the way of God. And I know people get mad and get upset because I'm always talking about the children and I'm always talking about the young adults. I'm always talking about the youth and some people feel, oh, he's forgetting about us seniors or middle. No, I'm not forgetting about y'all. Amen. Because when we lift them up, you will be blessed. Amen, somebody. I know y'all want to hear this. Because sometimes we, we, we want a church that's going to be here for them. So we have to make sure that what we do now will make them happy and, um, and, and not, when I say happy, but make them excited to come to church and do ministry in the life of the church. But guess what? Before they even get here, they're fighting. They're fighting Satan. They're fighting family members. They're fighting things out in the streets. They're fighting in the school to get them here. That's why some of them on a Sunday morning, they come with attitudes. And rolling their eyes. Don't look at me like y'all ain't never came to church rolling your eyes mad. Because mama told you to get up and you ain't want to get up. Mama told you to put some clothes on. And you ain't want to put your clothes on. Some of the young folks mad don't want to brush their teeth. I know I'm right about it. Y'all mad. Because mama told you you couldn't go outside and stay outside late couldn't do what you wanted to do. Smile. Jesus loves you. Your mother loves you. Your grandparents love you. They want the best for you. And guess what? You may get mad at them. Guess what? I got mad at my grandmother and parents all the time. And some of the people here that's, that the parents is with, don't, don't, if you got your parent with you, just look forward. Just look forward. They got mad at their parents too. But guess what? They know now in their adult age that what mom and daddy was doing was for the best interest of them. Amen? Amen. Parents, you got a child up here. Come up here, please. You got a grandchild up here. Come up here, please. Amen. Come on, if you're able to. Amen. If you're able to, praise the Lord. It's like if you're able to. Amen. If you're able to. Oh, I'm sorry, mother. I'm sorry, mother. Children kneel. Kneel at the altar. Kneel at the altar. Amen. 
Amen. I know there, if there's anybody else, I don't want to leave. Because you know, we all family, right? So if there's anybody else, you may not have no biological child up here, but if you want to come and stand behind them, you can come up here as well today, um, this morning. Just touch your hands, put your hands, touch, touch the children. Young man, Neil. Neil. I want each one of you to know that God loves you. That God loves each and every one of you. And I'm taking the time out of our worship service to do this. Because the enemy is busy and the enemy wants to distract you and the enemy wants to take you out. But I come against the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. That you have authority. That you have what God excuse me, wants you to have. And you may not understand what we're doing. But we're praying for each and every one of you. I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care what the enemy is doing in your life. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God loves you. And God will do the right thing in your life. And guess what? Times may get hard. You may want to cry. But I come to tell you that God loves you. And not only does God love you, we love you as well. Can we all pray? Can we all pray this morning? Father God, we come this morning first just asking that you create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, oh God. God, we come to say thank you this morning. God, we thank you that when our brothers and sisters are in need, God, God, that we can pause in our order of service. I know that we have an order, but God, we sometimes need to throw away our order and do what you, the Holy Spirit is leading us to do, God. And so, God, we come right now in the name of Jesus, and we ask that you touch every young person at this altar right now in the name of Jesus. God, God, we ask the anointing to touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Any assignment that the enemy has for their life, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. The enemy cannot have their life in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare the spirit of the Lord to be over each and every one of them. Enemy, you have to go. You have to flee. You cannot have them. They are wonderfully and fearfully made and by the power that is invested in me, God, we ask that you wrap your loving arms around each and every one of these young people, God. God, if they feel like crying, God, God, let them cry, God. God, whatever is in their life, they're not supposed to be there. God, we ask that you remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Put a hedge of protection over them when they're at home, God, when they're at school, God, when they're out playing, God. Put a hedge of protection over them, God. And God, we ask for forgiveness as parents, as grandparents, as aunts, as uncles, as adults, that we have done things that were not leading these young people in the right way, God. God, we've cussed in front of them, God. God, we've talked about people in front of them, God. We've done things that we should not have done in front of them, God. And so, God, we ask for forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we pray that you will um, allow us to lead these children in the way that they should go. God, put young people in their lives that will teach them the way of God. God, if there are any friends that's in their lives that, that are trying to move them away from you, God, we ask that you remove those young people away from them. God, we come and thank you for our young people. God, we pray for every parent, every grandparent. We pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Every aunt, every uncle right now, every cousin right now that have children. God, let them know that they will be held accountable for what they do with these children. God, allow our parents to stop cussing at these children. Allow our parents to stop going off on these children. We have generational curses because we cuss at the children because somebody cussed at us. God, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. God, heal any trauma in any of their hearts. God, heal any trauma right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for what you're going to do in the lives of these young people. Yeah. And God, most importantly, let the Wesley Temple Church be a place where they will be excited about doing ministry for you, God. Let us always include every young person. And God, I don't care what the enemy told them, oh God, 
that if any of them have a learning disability, God, that they can be whatever there is that they want to be, no matter what the world tells them, whatever they want to be, God, they can be it because you put a protection over them and they are wonderfully and fearfully made. And so, God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you're going to do in the lives of these young people. And not only these young people, but any other young people that's under the sound of my voice that might be watching virtually. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise and we give you honor. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ that I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Can we celebrate these young people? Stand up, young people. Give me a handshake. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God loves you. God, hello, 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 hello. God, ble God bless you. 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 You may go. Amen. Make sure y'all love on these young people. Amen. Let them know that you love them. Thank y'all for allowing me to do that. We love young people here at Wesley Temple. Amen. right. Deacon this ritual. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Wesley Temple, we want to encourage um, Sister um, Jasmine and Alexis and Sister Mercedes um, as they begin to put a program together for these young people we have to have Bible study. Amen. We have to have something for our young people. And so we thank God that they are beginning to do some things so that we can pour Bible study, uh, not pour Bible study, pour God into them through Bible study. Amen. Um, amen. Um, are there any announcements? Um, I do know that sister, um, somebody give her a microphone. Oh, praise the Lord. She got a boot owner. Amen. I know you have an announcement and I know Reverend Sanders has an announcement and I see Sister um, Sister um, Tanya Lund. How you know I was talking about Tanya Lund? Um, standing up. If you all can make your way um, to the front um, and use this microphone so that we can get out of here. Um, yes, Sister Dinkins. <laughs> Good morning, Wesley Temple. Good morning. I would stand up again, but that's not good. But I wanted to bring to your attention that on April 27th, we will be having a missionary mass meeting at St. Luke. On that day, I just got an email that they are requesting that we bring men socks, not the ones that's being used. Get a little pack from the Dollar General, Dollar Tree, wherever. But if you don't feel like going shopping, feel free to come see me today or next week and um, give me a cash donation and I'll go shopping for those items. So Wesley Temple is well represented at St. Luke Missionary Mass Meeting. And if you feel like, um, if you give your donations through cash app or through a check, you can earmark it and say, missionary mass meeting and they will make sure that I get those funds to go shop for. Again, we're looking for men's socks, all sizes, any color, new, or cash donation. Thank you for your attention to this. Could you use the mic over here, please, to give your announcement? Amen. 
Amen. Amen, Reverend. Oh, aren't we having a good time today? Amen. The Amen. weather looks good. It's sunny and outside. It's so sunny. Woo, we praise the Lord that we're out to the house of the Lord one Amen. more time. Hallelujah. My announcements is the prayer, uh, the prayer committee. And uh, myself. We're having a Holy Ghost prayer and praise party on Friday, 5.30 to 8. And I'm asking everyone to come out and let's fellowship with one another. We do have flyers out there in the um, vestry. So Holy Ghost prayer and praise party, April the 19th, here at Wesley Temple, we'll be downstairs, we'll have music, we'll have prayer, we'll have worship, and we'll have a little repast. So everyone is welcome. Spread the word. Amen? Amen. Now, Pastor Privilege, I just want to sing this song for a minute. You can't make me doubt. Because I'm not going to doubt him on Friday, Amen. this Friday, the 19th. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Oh. Sing this favorite song, praise the Lord. <laughs> Sister Lande. Yes, Pastor. Amen. Good morning, Wesley Temple AME Zion Church family. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the uh, Wesley Temple AME Zion Missionary Society. If I could have Joanne Harper stand, Tia Tyler, Jasmine Glass, Mercedes Gonzalez, Carol Hubbard. Angela Dinkins, Brenda Wallace. All of these are leaders up under the Missionary Society. All right. So we are having our Bomb in Gilead prayer breakfast on Saturday, May 18th. If you have not gotten your tickets yet, you might want to get it as soon as possible. All of these individuals standing have tickets in their hands. For you, okay. Tickets are thirty-five dollars. Um, it's going to be an excellent program. The program is being held um, in the hall at the Akron Urban League, um, four forty Vernon Oda Boulevard, Akron four four three zero seven. That's Saturday, May eighteenth, ten forty-five. Um, this is to pay our missionary assessment, which is due by June first. Thank you very kindly. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for your um, announcements. Um, please know that your quarterly conference forms are due on April the 23rd. Amen. Um, April the 23rd, your quarterly conference forms are due, so please make sure you get those in so that we can um, do what we need to do for the fourth quarterly conference. Amen. Um, my last announcement is in word of, um, it's a point of personal privilege because um, someone asked me to make the announcement um, just to let everybody know because not everybody is on Facebook. Um, as you all know, first I want to thank you, Wesley Temple, for um, just allowing me to, the last two years, um, to go to school 
um, and to get um, another degree. Um, I need you to have those same patients starting in May um, because as you all know, I will be starting my doctoral program um, in May. But on May the 11th, um, your pastor will be graduating um, from Cleveland State University um, with a master's of education. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, and although I know there are some people that um, are coming to um, the graduation at the Woolstein Center, um, you more than welcome to come, but I know some people cannot come, um, but on that evening from five to 10, I am having a graduation celebration um, here in Akron, um, and all of you are invited, amen. Um, and I'll let you know now, don't come thinking it's a church party, praise the Lord, amen. We're coming to have fun of what the Lord has done in the two years that, um, that it took me to get this degree. So I wanted to formally invite each and every one of you. Uh, we may send an email out, um, or the steward or the stewardesses may send an official email out, but I wanted to let you all know so that um, if you are available on May the 11th between five and 10 to pencil it in and come and celebrate with me um, what God is doing, amen? Amen, let us pray. Um, eternal and wise God, we thank you for this worship experience. God, we thank you for not only growing the kingdom of God, but growing our church family this morning. God, you always show up. When we feel like we're not doing enough, when we feel like we're doing the wrong things, God, you show up to remind us that we, the body of believers called Wesley Temple, are on the right track. God, let us always be wheat and let us get rid of the weeds so that we can continue to bear fruit. And God, we ask that you just be with each and every one of us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore, and the saints of God. Let the church say, Amen. Can you come up here? Um, we're going to take a picture. God bless everyone. Tell your neighbors that you love them. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy this wonderful weather. Amen. Amen.